Well, my friend, I told you that I was going to tell you the story about our recent disaster that happened at Positive Christianity, and I'm going to do it today. It's a wonderful story about how God works in seemingly impossible situations. When we started this ministry in 1999, I had 70-some email addresses. That was a good place to begin at really the beginning of email and internet. Very few people had it back then. I would go around the country speaking, and most people said, well, I don't have a computer, I don't have email. They didn't have it at that time. But over time and years of speaking, we were able to develop that list into over a million names, and they received it daily. And then the action that happened the other day took place. Now, one of my favorite stories is of Thomas Edison. When he was at the height of his success, he had a huge factory filled with inventors that worked for the great inventor. And they were working in every part of that factory on new or bettering ideas to already existing inventions that Thomas Edison had brought out. And one night, late at night, not knowing the cause of this, there was a fire. And the fire spread throughout the entire factory and was burning. And it could be seen for miles because the factory was on top of a hill. And here's what Thomas Edison did. He, he called his sons around him and he said, Sons, go get your mama. She will never again be able to see a fire like this. The next day, he told the press that, well, he said, all my mistakes went up in smoke. And now I can begin again. And now I will do greater things than I would have done before. Oh, that's a, that's a great story of faith. And it's a great story of what can happen that God can restore everything, that miracles can happen. This whole ministry was not my creation. It was God's creation. You know, I fought it in the beginning. I didn't own a computer myself. I didn't know how to do this. I still don't know how to type. When I write the positive daily inspirations or the written sermons, I use a microphone and I talk it in. And then it types for me. It's been quite a creation. And something that I could have never thought of. But God did. And God led me to do this. And I was a very unwilling subject in the beginning. Being pulled along the way into a direction that I did not understand in human mind. Well then, we have all this success of God. A huge ministry, one of the biggest ministries in the, in the country, with over a million people of every religion. See, that's the difference of positive Christianity. We have no agenda. We want to make a Catholic a better Catholic, a Methodist a better Methodist, a Baptist a better Baptist, just by giving them spiritual truth to help them on their own chosen path. And then, the other morning, I was into what is called the List Server, which was Lyris Technologies out of California. Every morning, I go in there, and there are addresses that have been held. Now, held means it's a bad address. We can't get through, or it's had too many bounces. You know, we... We actually have to pay for every email sent out. It's a fraction of a fraction of a penny, but having over a million people, I'll tell you, that adds up. It's a pretty expensive ministry to run. So we are very diligent on clearing out those held bad email address addresses. Well, I went in there, as I have done for 15 years, and I hit the delete all button. 
And what came back was, you have deleted 1,299,000 email addresses. And I looked at it and I thought, this can't be true. And I went back a page and it still showed my addresses on there. I immediately called Lyris Technology in California and I said, hey, I said, it says I deleted all the addresses. And they just shrugged their shoulders and they said, well, we don't have any backup. You did permanent delete. And I thought, oh my, this ministry is gone. There's no way that I can get back those addresses. And I said, are you sure you don't have any backup? And they said, no, not unless you do. Well, we did have backups of the addresses. But here's the interesting thing. When we looked at them, they were all the backup of the second list. Even though they said positive daily inspiration, they were the smaller list of what we send to churches and ministers called positive written sermons that we do once a week. And we had many backups of that, but they, because we have two lists, had actually sent us the wrong backup over and over and over again. So we still have positive written sermons, but we don't have positive daily inspiration. I literally had only one address, and that was my own. And it was the type of thing just saying, oh my God, what do we do now? So immediately we went on Facebook and we asked ministries around the country to help us on our positive written sermons, to help us restore our list, and to tell people about what had happened. But most people from that vast list did not get the message. So we just decided, with God's help, we did it once, we can do it again, we can rebuild. Well, an interesting thing happened within hours of praying to God. We did find a backup of the entire list, but that was from the year 19, uh, not 19, but 2009, which, you know, in internet time, that's a long time ago. And it's when we were having major problems with uh, Yahoo blocking us and some of the other email services thinking that we were spam. But we went through literally every single name for a real email address, not something that was subscribed during uh, what the, they do from some foreign countries and spam. We get hundreds of those daily. That took 16 hours a day for over a week to go through that list and restore what we thought was current. It's funny. Many of those people that started to receive again said, Oh, thank God. We had wondered what happened to you. Well, it had been six years. And uh, we were still here, but they weren't receiving. And, uh, but thank God they are now. And then... In talking with Lyris to upper management, they said, all of a sudden, well, we do have a backup. I said, but I was told you didn't have a backup. And anyway, they were able to restore our original list, plus all those days and nights that we spent 16 hours a day going through the old list, we now have more names than we had before. We're healthier than we were before. At the time in 2009 when that list was harvested that we um, had on a saved disk drive of an older computer, well, that was a time where we were being blocked and in, in real trouble. I remember early on, we were blocked by AOL, and that was when AOL was big. Now it's nothing, but boy, oh boy, they really tried to put us out of business for some reason.
but it didn't work, did it? And we're still here. We're still here because God is still here. And the power of this story is not my story, but to share it with you so that when disaster hits in your own life, you'll know that you can begin again, that you can create a new world for yourself, that it is never the end. It's just another new beginning. You know, I've lost ministries fast before. You can have a change in a board or something where everything's going great, and within days, <laughs> you're out of the ministry. And uh, that was fast, but nothing like this. That was really fast. Microseconds fast. Well, I ask you on a daily basis to do what we did. When you haven't a clue what to do, begin with prayer. Your spiritual journey begins with prayer. And it's what we're about, and it's what we're sharing with you to be about. Quiet words born of a need to know more of the presence of God. And this prayer is also the beginning of a spiritually enriched life. As your journey continues, you include, as we have included, other people in prayer. And then you embrace all of God's creation in prayers of love, in prayers of appreciation. And you believe with God in total faith that you're going to travel far on your spiritual path. And you're going to reach an awareness of God that supersedes the needs for words. You become one with your prayers by living them out in your life. Each action that you take and every thought that you think will be a reflection of love and it will be of faith. And still, your journey will continue. You may not know in human mind what tomorrow may bring, but you do know that by living a life of prayer, each moment will be a sacred moment with God. My friend, again, I thank you for your prayers during our time of crisis that turned into an opportunity of great blessing with God.